stories, uh, that's pretty much a certified fact. But more than loving good stories, uh, we love great stories even more. Uh, but loving stories is something that makes us uniquely human. Uh, we love stories because we are humans. And, and as long as there have been humans, there have been humans telling stories to other humans. Um, I think back in January, I was reading an article in, in The Guardian, I think it was, and there was an article about some recent cave paintings that were discovered in Indonesia. And experts date those cave paintings back 45 plus thousand years ago. And those cave paintings were just another way of telling stories. So we have been telling stories for a really, really long time. Uh, I, I was reading after someone recently in a matter that was unrelated to this, but the statement stuck out to me. And, and they talked about when you look back over the landscape of history, there have been great societies that did not use the will but there has not been a single society that did not tell stories. Um, because stories is one of the most fundamental, they're one of the most fundamental ways that we connect to each other. If you tell a story to someone, there's a connection that takes place. If somebody tells you a story, there, there's a connection that takes place. You know, somebody at work, you know, you get in a conversation, they tell you this story and it's like a connection happens. And stories are a way we connect with each other. It's our way of connecting with history, you know, we tell stories about the past so that it continues to live on in the present. It's our way of connecting to ideals, uh, to values, to common beliefs and emotions. Uh, stories are so important because they teach us, uh, they challenge us, uh, they can persuade us, they can change the way that we think about something, the way that we feel about something, and they inspire us. In, in other words, stories are powerful because they're so powerful they can take highly sophisticated ideals and complicated realities, and they can condense them down to something that is both compelling and comprehensible. Uh, you can take something very scholarly and, and turn it into a story, and a non-scholar can understand it. Uh, you can take someone who's highly cerebral and, and, and something that's incredibly complicated, but you attach a narrative to it, and, and those of us who are not highly cerebral and, and not breaking the bank on IQ, we can understand it. Um, I, I love to read about this stuff, and, and if you'll allow me the, the pleasure to geek out for just a moment, uh, I, I read a lot of things, and a lot of the things I read about, I, I have no one to talk to about. I, I know that no one in my life cares about a lot of the things that I read about. But then when I feel like I don't have anybody to talk to, I remember you. And I'm like, oh, they're going to be there someday. So let me, let me just talk about this for just a moment, because modern science, they've studied what happens when we hear stories. And through MRI imaging of the brain, this is fascinating because this is the way that God wired us. This is the way that God designed us. And this is how powerful stories are. If there was a storyteller up here in front of us today telling us a story, and there was an MRI, MRI of their brain and an MRI, MRI of all of our brains, our brain activity and our brain waves would begin to mirror the brain waves and the brain activity of the storyteller. So the storyteller's brain begins to be mirrored by our brain. Our brains literally sync together when we are listening to someone tell a story. And I mean, that is incredibly powerful because it changes the way that we think. It not only changes the way that we think, but your brain and my brain would begin to mirror their brain because stories move us in a common direction with common thought and common emotion. And so the conclusion is, from, from experts who study this thing, that stories, they trigger a response, a significant response, from the deepest parts of our humanity, because stories are intended to help us understand the world around us and understand our place in the world. Uh, that's why we're doing this series called Old School, because we're going back and we're looking at old stories, because stories are powerful. And we're listening to these stories, hopefully so that our minds can get in sync with the intent of the original storytellers. So we're going back and we're talking about some of the most known stories from the Old Testament, stories that many of us were told in childhood in Sunday school. Uh, but yet they were told to us, you know, knowing that we were children. But we're going to revisit and retell and reimagine these stories through the eyes and the ears and the perspective of now being adults. So today we're going to go back. And we're going to go way back. We're actually going back all the way to the beginning. Because when it comes to stories, beginnings are important. Uh, beginnings, it's the part of the story that gives an audience a reason to keep reading or a reason to keep leading, uh, listening. It, it, it's the hook. It's the, it's the bait. It's what seduces us further into the story. Uh, it does this because maybe it introduces a character in the beginning that we want to know more about. 
Uh, maybe it poses a question that makes us want to keep reading in hopes of finding the answer. Or there's a tension uh, in the beginning that we want to see resolved. So it keeps us in the story. It keeps us listening. It keeps us reading. Uh, because I, I, I think, and I do quite a bit of writing and I do quite a bit of reading. I think that, you know, especially as a reader, beginnings are really important to me. I want it to be good from the very beginning. I was taught in school, you know, that the introduction trumps all. The introduction trumps all. That if your introduction doesn't capture people, it doesn't matter how good the rest of it is. People are going to stop reading. People are going to stop listening. Uh, Stephen King. Uh, how many of y'all like to read Stephen King's books? Okay, three of us. And uh, so maybe you like Stephen King's movies. But he, he talked about his writing one time, and he talked about how he goes through the writing process. And, and he said that he has spent weeks and months and even years sometimes writing the beginning paragraph of one of his books. Because to get the first paragraph right was what he needed to do in order to open up the door for the rest of the book. So he would sometimes work on the beginning for a year because it took a really good beginning to open the door to the rest of the story. And that's what beginnings do. It prepares us for the rest of the story because it gives us a foundation to stand on. It gives us a context to work in. It gives us eyes to see with. It gives us ears to hear through. Uh, that's what beginnings do. And so today we're going to go back to the story that preceded all stories in the Old Testament. We're going to go back to the book of the beginnings or the book of Genesis. And that's 